Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about Kikuchi Fujimoto disease. It was first described by Dr. Masahiro Kikuchi in 1972 and independently by Y. Fujimoto. It is also known as histiocytic necrotizing lymphadenopathy and is a rare benign disorders of lymph nodes predominantly of young adults and children. It has a high tendency to occur in female but also it is seen in males. It is a benign condition of unknown cause usually characterized by cervical lymphadenopathy and fever. The histological and clinical presentations suggest either a viral or autoimmune trigger for T cells and histiocytic immune response. Viral infection may considered here are Epstein-Barr virus, human herpes 6, human herpes 8, human immunodeficiency virus, parvovirus B19, paramyxoviruses, parainfluenza viruses, Yersinia enterocolitica and toxoplasma. It has been associated with various autoimmune conditions like SLE, Jogren, granulomatosis with polyangitis, rheumatoid arthritis and Steele's disease. SLE is the most commonly associated with Kikuchi Fujimoto disease. A specific human leukocyte antigens HLAs have been identified in population with higher susceptibility to Kikuchi Fujimoto disease, specifically HLA class 2 alleles including HLA DPA1 and HLA DPB1. It has other names like histiocytic necrotizing lymphadenitis, HNL, KFD. Kikuchi disease, Kikuchi is histiocytic necrotizing lymphadenitis and also called as necrotizing lymphadenitis. Now let's learn about clinical features. They include mild fever, night sweats, muscle pain and a rash. A less common symptoms include headaches, fatigue, joint pain, nausea, vomiting, loss of weight and maybe hepatosplenomegaly can be seen. A abnormal tissue growth and inflammation in KFT usually clears up spontaneously within a few weeks or months without further therapy. So it is a self-limited disease. Now let's learn about differential diagnosis of KFT. It may resemble other conditions that cause swollen lymph nodes such as lymphoma like Burkitt's lymphoma and Hodgkin's lymphoma and other conditions like tuberculosis, SLE and infectious mononucleosis. Diagnosis. There is no specific blood test to diagnose KFD. A specific blood test may require to exclude another disease such as ANA for SLE. A gold standard for diagnosis is excisional biopsy of enlarged lymph node. It is a patchy but well defined diagnosed on biopsy. The biopsy findings include partial or complete lymph node architecture distortion. Biopsy also shows histiocytes, dendritic cells, eosinophilic granular material, lots of carrier hectic debris with necrosis with characteristic lacking of neutrophil and eosinophil within an expanded paracortical area of lymph node. Histiocytic phagocytic cells shows eosinophilic cytoplasm and crescent shaped nuclei and non phagocytic cells shows twisted or raniform nuclei. The condition is characterized by three histological stages. First is proliferative, second is necrotizing and third is xanthomatous. During proliferative phase there is a follicular hyperplasia with infiltrate comprised of histiocyte and lymphocyte with notable absence of neutrophils and eosinophils. In necrotizing stage, distinctive features include histiocyte nuclear breakdown which is carrier hexes and multiple necrotic foci while overall lymph node architecture remains intact. Lastly, in xanthomatous stage, there are foamy histiocyte with a regression of necrocytic areas. A notable absence of neutrophil or eosinophil is evident throughout all these stages. 
which serves as a crucial distinguishing feature between KFD and infectious etiologies. Immunohistochemistry will demonstrate histiocytes positive for myeloproxidase CD68, CD163. T cells shows positivity for CD8 and CD4 and minimal presence of B cells. The presence of hematoxylin bodies, DNA deposits in vessel wall and regions of vasculitis surrounding a zone of necrosis is seen in SLE lymphadenitis that aids in its distinction from KFD. Now let's learn about the management of KFD. The treatment of KFD is symptomatic and supportive. The disorder resolves spontaneously within few weeks or months. Analgesic, antipyretic and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may be used to treat pain, tenderness and lymphadenopathy related fever. These are the references for this video. Hope you like it. Thank you. Bye. See you in the next video.